All right, good day everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and now what we're doing is uh, we are looking at the guts. This is the annotated version of looking at the guts of an arterial blood gas machine, uh, specifically in reference to how we measure the uh, PaO2. Okay, so what do we have set up here? Um, we're going to use the uh, hemoximetry, which uses a, the principle of spectrophotometry, which is fundamentally based upon um, uh, quantum mechanics, but we uh, can use the Beer-Lambert law um, to figure out the concentration of a certain analyte um, based on um, the absorbance of that analyte. Okay, so what I have here in this in this machine is I have a lamp right here. All right, I have a lamp and this lamp is going to emit some light. Okay. Um, this is a light bulb, but it's not not really <laughs> a light bulb. Um, I, I think it's like a I think it's a, like a thallium. I think they use a, a thallium cathode to emit light, but whatever. Um, this works. So this is going to emit light. All right. And this light is going to go through a lens here. All right, we're going to use this lens to focus the light. All right, so there we go. Boom, going through the lens. And then the light's going to get focused as it comes out of this lens here. And it's going to get focused um, in uh, on either a, a filter or um, I, would, I would think that probably a diffraction grating will be used. But whatever the case, there's going to be some sort of filtering mechanism that filters out all of the wavelengths that we don't want and um, just uses the specific wavelength of light that we want. So I'm going to draw that in red. So now we have the specific wavelength of light filtered out. Um, and then that wavelength of light is going to go through yet another lens. Okay. So light's going to go through another lens, and then what's going to happen is that as that light is going to be focused onto, uh, let me, there we go. It's going to be focused onto this little thing here, and this little thing here is called a beam, a beam splitter. All right, and so what's going to happen is part of the beam is going to um, go up in this direction here. Okay, so the beam, this 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 beam of a very specific wavelength of light is going to be shot, going to be split, and some of it's going to go up here. And this is a this little eyeball in there that that just means a sensor or a detector. And this little thing up here is called the reference. It's called the um, reference sensor. All right, so this is our reference. This is saying, okay, yep, this is the intensity of light. This is how much. Um, this is a wavelength. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is finding basically what this is doing is this is telling us what um, the amount of what the the intensity of the light going in is. Okay, okay, that's what our reference sensor does. And then what's going to happen is, whoa, let's is the other part of the light, the, the beam that gets split, is going to go through here, all right? And this little area here is actually where I have my, my sample. My, my, little, my little blood sample is in there, and that's actually called a um, cuvette. All right, so I've got my sample of blood in here, and that light with a very specific wavelength is going to go whoosh, pass through that blood. And then I have another sensor here, and this is the sample sensor here. All right, so this is my sample sensor, and it's going to detect, okay, what is the intensity of the light coming out, okay? And then the information from the reference sensor, so this is the eye one here, right? This is intensity coming in. This is this is going to tell the then this is a little microprocessor here. So this is my central processing unit and then my display. 
where I actually get my information. Okay, so this is going to tell me, okay, boom, this is the intensity of the light coming in. That goes to the CPU. And then the sample sensor is going to go, hey, this is the intensity of the light coming out. So this is my I2 here. Boom. All right. That information goes into the CPU, and then the CPU goes, hey, you know what? I can figure the transmittance. I can figure out the absorbance. I can use Beer's Law, and I can give you the answer to everything that there is. 42 pops up. No, nah, just kidding. Whatever the, the PAO2 is, it can figure it out. All right, so this is how, um, in a very simplified form, how an ABG machine works. Um, this is how hexometry, specifically, hemox ah, hexometry, what the heck am I saying today? Um, hemoxymetry, all right, hemoxymetry, and it uses the, the principle of spectrophotometry. All right, spectrophotometry uh, relies on the Beer Lambert law, all right, to figure out what the concentration um, is and ultimately what the partial pressure is. Now, I do want to uh, stress that for this whole thing to work, we need to be able to control for a whole lot of things, okay? For a whole lot of things. We need to be able to control um, the, the equipment, the cuvette, the, uh, how much, what, how, um, the, the length, okay, the length of the pathway, um, how much blood is that light going through? What kind of, of container? What kind of container am I using? What kind of medium? All right. You know, if I were to use water, um, obviously, um, you know, I may get a very different value because this machine is is designed to look at blood, and it that's what it, um, um, that's what the you know it's how it's calibrated and so on and so forth. You know, so I need to make sure that I, I'm I'm using blood, and then then there's some other things that come into there. Um, you know, uh, hemoglobin. You know, do I have some weird form of hemoglobin, and 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 has that been accounted for? A lot of these machines are able to look at different types of hemoglobin, um, met hemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, um, etc. Et uh, but you know, you you that's something you need to ask about. Um, what about the temperature, the temperature of of the sample of blood, um, and then are there any kind of like weird substances? Okay, weird substances uh, in the blood or maybe contaminants in the blood um, that can absorb the same wavelengths as oxyhemoglobin, right? And then, and then that can kind of be a confounder. So um, we need to, I just wanted to stress that for this to all work, we have to control for a lot of different things. And obviously um, that plays a big role into doing our daily calibrations on these ABG machines, right? If, you, if you've worked with them um, in a point-of-care situation where you're a therapist, you've drawn the blood and you go to the machine, you know that on a daily schedule you're having to do one- and two-point calibrations and you're calibrating this machine to a um, reference sample and that is to make sure that the darn machine, that you know all of these things that we can control for, the machine is still producing results, um, that correspond um, very well to known known controls. Okay, so that's a really big part of how this this process works as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully have a little better understanding. And hopefully, the people uh, that may be looking at this video to grade me um, find this uh, worthwhile endeavor as well um, for the sake of my grade. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.